okay. Thank you for inviting me to the Selenium Champ Conference. So today I will present about Appeal Mix Selenium and Docker. So this is the agenda of our presentation. So first I will introduce Salango, the company that I work for, and also a little bit about me. And then I will ex uh, continue to explain about the idea or the reasons behind the project that Appium working on. Uh, so why we wanted to integrate Appium uh, with Selenium, Create and Docker. So basically it's about uh, where the idea came from. And then in the next point, it is about pre-slide demo. So I will show you the comment that you can use to run or deploy the project that I will show you in the preview slide. So don't worry. And after that, uh, I will do a live demo. And if you have any questions, uh, you can ask at the end of the presentation. So we will have a QA uh, section. So Sangle, uh, maybe some of you have heard about Sangle. Sangle is one of the largest uh, online shopping company in Europe. Uh, we have uh, seven tech locations, with, which are uh, Dublin, Helsinki, uh, Dortmund, Erfurt, Mönchengladbach, Hamburg, and Berlin as headquarters. So I work in one of the buildings in Berlin. And Salango has around 1,900 employees, or tech employees, or tech engineers from 77 nations. So it's quite international. And we have a lot of exciting projects that we are working on. And we also do open source. So if you want, you can also check, out, uh, check our GitHub repository. And if you are interested to join us, we are hiring. So, uh, so please pray go look, up, look our job page. So about me. So my name is Bugio Kamo. I come from Indonesia. And I have been living in Berlin, Germany uh, for 10 years. Uh, since 2013, uh, I have been working at Salando, and my current role is uh, as infrastructure engineer. So I love open source. Uh, I am an open source enthusiast. Uh, I do open source in my free time, and I'm also an APU member on GitHub. And in the end, it's my Twitter ID. <laughs> so we start with Selenium Grid. I believe that all of you who are sitting here know about Selenium Grid. But I just want to do a um, small explanation to refresh this, uh, this topic, because we will need it in the live demo. So Selenium Grid is a grid that allows you to run tests in parallel on multiple machines. So from the picture, we can see that Selenium Grid consists of two parts. One is node, nodes are in the bottom, and one is hub in the top. And node is a machine where your tests uh, will run. And you need to connect the node to the hub, and hub will organize your uh, test execution based on the capabilities that you pass and also the available nodes that you have. Let's say that you have a UI web uh, test project and you want to run it on Linux. Then you send to the hub and the hub will redirect uh, and you want to test on the Chrome browser and on Linux. So the hub will redirect your test on the Chrome Linux. And from the picture, you can also uh, connect or create a node, Android node or iOS node, to the Selenium hub. But to be able to do it, you need an Appium. Uh, does anyone here know about Appium? OK. And from those who are raising the hand, are you using Appium in your daily work? OK. So last question. Why Appium? Because, uh, for example, for Android, uh, Android is developed by Google. 
And there is a test framework called Espresso. It's created by Google. Why you are using Appium? I think for me, in the fact, it makes more sense to use Espresso instead of Appium. Okay, uh, if you can connect with Selenium, but let's say that Appium is not is flaky, are you still using Appium? <laughs> okay, uh, here I will share my experience why I choose Appium on or even I part of Appium member. Uh, but before that, let's say about uh, what is Appium. Appium is an open source test framework for use with native, hybrid, and mobile web apps. So native apps is an app that you can look from the app store, and it is written in the, in the languages that the, uh, that the platform accept. For example, uh, for Android, uh, native app is written in Java, and for iOS, uh, native apps is written in Objective C or Swift. And mobile web apps is the apps that doesn't need to be downloaded like uh, native app does. So mobile app, uh, web app load in the browsers like Safari, Firefox, and Chrome, and etc. Uh, majority, it is written in JavaScript, HTML5, and CSS. And if you combine both types, then we call it hybrid. So part of it is native apps, and part of it is uh, web apps. So hybrid apps is an app that you download from the App Store, but it is written in HTML5, JavaScript, and CSS. In uh, maturity. And based on my experience, so back in 2013, I was a software engineer in test for mobile application. So my responsibilities was to build and maintain the test project for Android and iOS because at that time there is no test framework that support uh, Windows app, but Appium does right now, so it's good, good, good news. Um, and uh, the reasons I choose uh, Appium based more from my experience is because it's free. I know all of you, uh, uh, all of the framework that I use like Robotium, Espresso, Calabars are also free, but Appium is one of them. And Appium is also open source, so you can see the source code and you can modify the code based on what you need. And Appium is designed for mobile. S some of the test framework designed for specific purpose. For example, for, uh, for Espresso, it's designed only for Android. For iOS, you need to uh, search for another framework. But uh, Appium is designed for mobile. Mobile here means that it covers almost uh, or support almost the famous uh, operating system like Android, iOS, and Windows. And it supports also the type of different application like uh, web, uh, web app, hybrid, hybrid, and native. It supports uh, different programming languages like Java, Python, and Ruby. So, um, so I can say that Appium, there is no programming language boundaries. So if you good in Java, then you can start with Java. If you good in Python, then you can start with Python. And then you can work in the separate test project. Uh, from my experience, like Espresso, it is required for you to work in the same project where the developer work. So it means for me, uh, it gives me more dependency to the developer. So my work depends on them. So they need to approve or ignore my pull request. But with Appium, you can start it right away. It's able to, to connect with Selenium Hub, so you, have, uh, you can manage everything in one single Selenium Hub, and you can see that which node is used and which node is not used. And we are having a big community. If you have questions or you need a support or help, 
you can ask uh, us in our uh, chat room. It called Gitter. And seven, I talk about Espresso. And now, uh, Appium support also. Uh, no, not now. But Appium support different automation engines, and now it support Espresso uh, engine. So you can try it and give us a feedback. It's quite new, but you can try it out. So after we know about Selenium and Appium, then uh, we will, uh, you will face the infrastructure issue. So imagine that uh, you were a web developer and or test web uh, test web test engineer, and you want to run the uh, your test on the mobile uh, mobile apps or, or mobile devices. So you will you will face documentation issue. So you need to read a ton of. Uh, Documentation to know about what is Android, what is iOS, uh, how to call, uh, how to install the Android SDK, how to create an emulator, everything. So uh, and how to connect uh, Appium uh, server to the Selenium hub. So you need to read a ton of documentation. After you are done with uh, reading the documentation, you set up everything. Then the second issue is you need to monitor the newest version of each tool because maybe there is a bug fix and maybe there is a new feature that uh, make easier uh, for you to use it. And after that, uh, you need to do manual updates which might cause you conflicts because uh, last time it worked but after the updates, it doesn't work anymore. Because the version of one tool uh, is not compatible with uh, the, the version of another tool, for example. And then everything works perfectly, but for specific time, uh, the machine is required to be rebooted. Because, for example, the memory is full. So you need to reboot the machine, and it will take you uh, some minutes until the machine is ready to use. So for that, Docker is the rescue. I know you might be familiar with Docker. I will just make it fast. So Docker is a tool designed to create, uh, deploy, and run application by using container technology. So container, container allow you to package up an application with all the dependencies that it needs and ship it as one package. So this is the differences between uh, VM and Docker. Uh, we can see that the differences are in the hypervisor, uh, guest OS, and Bing and the binaries and libraries. So in the VM, uh, you will have hypervisor, and hypervisor manage uh, the guest OS. That's why you can have multiple uh, guest OS, and it has own libraries and binaries. But on the Docker side, instead of using hypervisor, it uses Docker daemon, and uh, it can share uh, libraries and binaries uh, between containers. That's why it make it uh, light and fast. So the good news is uh, the good news is Appium provide an Appium Docker Android. So an Appium Docker Android is uh, a lightweight Docker image to run uh, Appium test on real devices. So it, uh, it focus on real devices. If you want to use uh, emulator, I have another project called Docker Android. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Uh, but if you want to focus on real devices, then please use this uh, project, Appium Docker Android. So 
So uh, why you need an uh, Ethereum Docker Android? Because it's free, so no cost. You can use it, and it's also open source. Uh, it is under Appium uh, GitHub repository, so you can check it out. Um, and you can also modify the code if you need. And it is also active, actively maintained. Uh, so we will always provide you the newest version of all the tools. And if you need support or help, then you can also contact us. It's easy to use. Like I mentioned before, if you were a web test uh, engineer and then you want to run the mobile tests on the mobile devices, then you need to read a ton of documentation. But with Appium Docker Android, you just need to enable the developer option. I can show you in the live demo for uh, those who doesn't familiar with, uh, with it. And also, you, the second is you just need to plug your cable. And then uh, Appium Docker Android will do the rest for you. So it will automate all the steps for you. And it's also fast. So because the application based on Docker and the Docker image, the size of the Docker image that we have is uh, is light, so it's pretty fast. So if you run it, it will takes you takes you like a uh, few seconds, like five seconds, and you will have the whole infrastructure. So I'm talking about Android, but how about iOS? Uh, Appium for iOS requires Cartridge and Xcode, which need to be installed in, on the Mac. That's why right now we do not support it, but maybe in the future. Let's see. So how does it work? So I give, I give you two sample command. The, the top one is uh, to run Appium Docker Android. Uh, we got connecting to the Selenium uh, hub. And the second one is if you want to connect to the Selenium hub. So I will explain one by one. So Docker run privilege, because you need to enable the privilege. And minus key is uh, run in the background. So the container will run on the background. And then minus, minus P is you expose the port, the Appium port. And minus V, uh, share the volume uh, from dot .android folder. Because if you are, if you the first time that you connect your device, then uh, it will appear a warning uh, that show that are you allow that uh, your laptop uh, access your device, then you need to press yes. If you press the yes, and then it will create a file, some, something like history, and then it will store in Doc Android. If you share Doc Android, then uh, for the second time, you plug in the devices, you do not need to have the warning message. And then you need to share the USB, and then give the container a name, and Appium, so as Appium is the Docker name, uh, uh, Docker image name. And for the second, uh, for the second command uh, is almost the same. The difference is only uh, you need to give the, you need to pass the environment variable minus E connect to the grid through, and then you need to provide the Appium host, Appium port, Selenium host, and Selenium port. That's it. So let's go to the live game. So right now, as you can see, if I press this one, nothing happened because the Selenium grid is not there. I will explain about the Docker Compose first. So this is the Docker Compose. Uh, so I will run the Selenium Hub, the newest version of Selenium Hub. You can see it, right? Okay. And then this one is the Appium Docker Android. It's the same command that I gave you in the, in the preview slide, but I'm using Docker Compose to make it faster. So this is the image name, uh, the image, and then you expose the port, 
and then you depend on the Selenium Hub, this one, and then give the privilege. <coughs> and then I share uh, the APK. This is the APK file, so it's for Android. You can also, uh, you can also share uh, after that by, by the command docker cp. But for docker compose, I will share directly. And then I connect to the grid through. I give Selenium host, which is in depend on the Selenium hub, this one. I put it here. And then uh, uh, you, uh, this browser name is Chrome. If you do not use this one, if you make it enable, uh, disabled, then uh, it will register your device as an Android node. But if you make it enabled, then it will register as a Chrome node, but for Android. So from my experience, it's better if you enable it, because if you enable it, you can use Ghost node for Android app testing and also uh, for MSAC testing. But if you disable it, you can only use it for Android app testing. For MSAC testing, it will fail. So it's better to, to enable it. OK. Um, so and, <coughs> and then uh, I have two devices right now. So it's not emulator, it's real devices. I just mirror the screen to my laptop. So the left side, uh, yeah, the, le the left side is the LG, and I will run uh, the UI test for mobile website to the left side, and to the right side, uh, it is a Samsung S7. I will I will run the mobile uh, Android app testing uh, to the Samsung S7. I will run those tests in parallel. So maybe I will show you the test first. Uh, it's quite simple. Sorry. So this one. So this is the Android app, which I will run on the Samsung S7. So you have the Android, and then give the version, and the device name. Don't worry about the device name. You can see it in the Selenium grid uh, from the capabilities, the option. So you don't worry about it. And then this is the APK. Uh, this is the Android application that I create by myself. It's a very simple one. You can see it uh, in a few minutes. And then I'm using UI Archimeter 2. And then this is because maybe you like Cucumber. Uh, for me personally, I, I don't like it. But uh, this is quite simple. Uh, given a calculator app, and then you sum two numbers, 3 plus 7 should be 10. So it's simple app. And then for M site, this is the M site. Like I mentioned before, I will run on the LG. And then I give the browser name. And then this is the feature file. So it will go to the Google and then search for Selenium. And then user will see the result. That's it. OK, let's run. OK, now uh, two devices is, are, are running. One is Selenium Hub, and one is Appium Docker Android. And let's see. I just want to check. OK. Um, let's go to the logs. Let's see Google. Yeah, this one. It's already there. So one is 7.0 and one uh, one is 5.0.2. Uh, and then you can see here. I mean, L, uh, uh, the device that has um, uh, version 5.0.2, it is LG. So actually, uh, Appium Docker Android. Uh, I will make everything for you. So you just need to plug your device and everything is registered to the Selenium Hub. Oh, okay. And 
Okay, let's go to the here. And this is the Android uh, test, and this is the M set. So I will just test, and then also in the same time. It's running, it's running. Let's see. So it's one is used, two is used, or used. Then you can see in the this one. Next time. So that's it. So it's pretty simple. Oh, I forgot to show you. If I so first time you need to enable the developer mode. If you do not know how to uh, enable developer mode, you go to the setting. I think I will go here setting, and then if. The developer mode is already enabled. You can see the developer options in the end of the op, uh, the menu. But if not, then you go to the about phone, and then software info, and then you type uh, seven times the build number, seven times. In the, in this case, I already enabled it. That's why it show me a warning. But I mean an info uh, message. But if you want to enable it, you can do it something like that. This. And then after you enable the developer node, you just connect your device to the USB to to your laptop, and then uh, the rest will be taken taken care. Okay. So questions. No? Okay. <laughs> and uh, if you want to take a look about the project, it is under Appium. Uh, and yeah, this is the project that I'm talking about. And the one that about the emulator, you can go to Docker Android, this one. <laughs> Thank you.